welcome back to Paula's Kitchen. We are in the midst of season two and we are on episode six already. My, how time is flying halfway through. So this is our by request series and I cannot even tell you how many requests we've had for meatloaf ever since we started doing this earlier in 2020. Meatloaf, I think guys love it. So we are going to do meatloaf today. And I did a search. I actually went all the way back to my old Betty Crocker and Better Homes and Gardens cookbooks. I looked on the web and I came up with one that is an updated recipe from a website called thewholesomedish.com and it has a thousand five-star reviews. So that's the one we're going to make. Let's talk ingredients. It calls for some nice lean ground beef, 90% lean. So our grocery store happened to have that. And we are going to season it with a number of things. We're gonna use a little bit of onion, milk, and egg, of course, as binders to hold it together with some breadcrumbs. And then for flavor, we're going to use Worcestershire sauce, a little bit of ketchup, some parsley, garlic, and salt and pepper. Then we're gonna put a little bit of a glaze on it that's going to be, again, a little bit of ketchup, a little bit of brown sugar, and a little bit of red wine vinegar. And the folks that have reviewed this give it rave for moistness and flavor. So I'm excited to give this one a try. Let's get going. First step, making a meatloaf in the oven. So let me turn the oven on, 350 degrees Fahrenheit. If you've been watching me, you know that's my default. And let's talk about the pan that we're gonna use. It is a traditional loaf pan, the same kind that you would make quick breads or breads in. I happen to have a loaf pan. And the author of the recipe recommends that to make it easier to pull that meatloaf out, since you're not greasing the pan, you line it with a bit of parchment paper. So I have done that just so I can lift it out and slice it when we're ready to serve it. Alrighty, moving that off to the side. I have put my beautiful 90% lean ground beef in my mixing bowl that we're going to be putting everything together in. And I have assembled and measured out some of my dry ingredients just to save some time. You guys, this is probably one of the simplest things we've made on Paula's Kitchen. It's meatloaf. <laughs> so uh, I do need to quickly take an egg and I need to just beat it a little bit before I put it in my meatloaf. So let me just do that real quick. I just have a little whisk. And again, like I said, this is gonna be a binder that we're gonna be using for the meatloaf to hold it all together. All right, that's probably enough on that. All right, getting serious here, rings off, because we're gonna be doing some mixing with our hands. Pull this forward and let me just go through the ingredients that we're gonna need. So first of all, one cup of dry breadcrumbs and I'm going to drop those in. This is really a kind of a dump it and stir it kind of a recipe. Um, a half a cup of diced onions. So I did one of my delicious sweet onions that I love and I diced that up. Next up, a half a cup of milk. So I measured out some milk. Binder for all of those breadcrumbs, of course. And then a large egg beaten. So we just saw that happen. We're gonna drop that in. Alrighty, and now all the fun flavors. We have two tablespoons of ketchup. So old fashioned Heinz ketchup here. Let me see if I can do this without splashing it all over myself. <laughs> There's one and you know what? Let me just do this so I don't miss any of the goodness. There's one. And here's my second one. The cool thing about meatloaf is you don't have to be super precise on this stuff. You know it's just going to taste good and be somewhat forgiving no matter what you do. And then we need one tablespoon of the Worcestershire. So give that a quick shake. 
I'm a big fan of Worcestershire sauce. I have a meatball recipe that uses Worcestershire and it's just one of my favorites. Alrighty. Let me check my recipe because I certainly don't know this one by heart. We're just checking as we go. All right, dry stuff at this point. I've got a tablespoon of parsley leaves. Drop that in dry, parsley. Then I also have three quarter teaspoon of salt. That comes next. And then in this cup, I have both a quarter teaspoon of ground black pepper, fresh ground, and also a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. So I'll put both those in. And that is it. So now we're up to the mix it up part. Let's get started with that. Ooh. <laughs> Before I get started, once my hands are gucky, <laughs> I'm not going to be able to do too much. So I went ahead and staged the ingredients for the topping that's going to go on the meatloaf. So let's dig in. The author of this particular recipe, her name is Amanda Finks. This is her website. Um, and she tells you that this is a very, oh, my oven's done. This is a very, very moist meatloaf. And the trick to success with it is to mix and mix and mix and mix so that you really get the breadcrumbs and the liquids and the seasonings incorporated into the meat because otherwise you could end up with a soggy result and we certainly don't want that. Alrighty, I have to say, looking at this, I'm thinking it's looking just about right. Okay, let me pull my pan over with the parchment paper and I'm simply going to take this and Put it into the pan and pat it down pretty flat across. Hopefully you can see that well on the overhead camera. Let me get all this goodness out of here. We'll pat it down into the corners. The bake time on this is going to be 55 minutes at 350 and then about a 10 minute rest time because if you don't let it rest, it could tend to crumble when you slice it. And of course we want these to be real pretty slices. So that is in the pan and With Joe and Diane. <laughs> that's what popped in my head too. Another cooking show. It is a cooking show on, on YouTube, a British couple. They're very inspiring and fun. Okay, hand washing time. And then I'm gonna make my little three ingredient glaze. Dale and I have been looking at this and we're kind of excited, I admit it. All right, let me set this aside for a sec and then I'm going to pull forward a little bowl that has my three ingredients for the glaze. I first of all have two tablespoons of packed brown sugar and then I'm going to grab one quarter cup of ketchup. So let me do that. Ketchup is an easy thing to measure. <laughs> All right, let's see how close we are. That looks about right to me. One quarter cup ketchup. And then just for a little bit of a zing, we are going to do one tablespoon of the red wine vinegar. So just three simple ingredients on this glaze. All right, I will stir that a little bit. Check my recipe. One quarter cup ketchup, two tablespoons packed light brown sugar, one tablespoon red wine vinegar, check. Stir this up. And then the instructions say, pour the sauce on the meatloaf, spread in an even layer. We can do that. This has been an interesting week here at uh, Las Vegas Inside and Out slash Paula's Kitchen Central. For some reason, we've had some wonderful gifts from some really wonderful, generous viewers, four of them in the space of this week. So let me just do a shout out and a thank you to Tracy for the Scotland calendar. She realized we were going to need another one here in our kitchen. To Ivy for the Starbucks New York City mug to Jesse 
for some amazing Ohio Buckeyes. Yum. Yum. <laughs> and finally, to Tony for no less than a pumpkin cheesecake pie. Dare, oh, no. dare I say that word? You didn't say pie. I did say pie. Pie! Penelope! I said Paul's making pie! I, I, I gotta go back to bed. I love you, darling. You're great. You're, you're, you're the, one, the most wonderful pie person I ever saw, but you only make one kind of pie. That's boysenberry. I'm partial to pumpkins and apple pies and peach pies. I gotta go catch the greyhound. I'll see you later, Penelope. Oh, God! I love you. I just disappointed you again. <laughs> Oh, we saw the last of him. Oh, uh, we left him in Knott's Berry Farm. Anyway, thank you all for your generosity and for feeding us and keeping us so happy. All right, guys, it's a masterpiece. I am putting this in the oven. It's going on 3.30 our time. So 55 minutes from now, we're going to take a look at that puppy and see how it looks. And meanwhile, off camera, I'm going to get started on my side dishes and we're going to have a wonderful little dinner here at Paula's Kitchen. Because the meatloaf recipe was pretty simple, I decided to go ahead and roll the camera while we're making the side dishes as well. I'm kind of excited about these little baby Yukon gold potatoes. They're called petite Yukons. They're very yellow fleshed and I'm really excited about just making a simple fried potato seasoned with a little bit of red pepper and onion. It's one of Dale's and my favorites. So I'm going to get that started and I figure that'll be done right about the same time as the meatloaf. I also have, as I said earlier, some really beautiful fresh green beans that we're going to be having for our uh, vegetable with the meatloaf. So we're going to have a pretty plate and I'm all about having a pretty plate, definitely. Um, all right, so what I typically do with these is I do a little bit of a mixture of both butter and olive oil in the pan. And I have a feeling I'm not going to need a ton of butter because the Yukon Golds are going to taste pretty buttery all by themselves. Get that going. And then a little bit of olive oil. I don't measure any of this. <laughs> I feel like I've been making sautéed potatoes my whole life, right? <laughs> um so just get that going a little bit till we get a nice sizzle. Start off with dropping in my veggies. I've got just a little bit of sweet onion and a little bit of fresh red bell pepper. And toss those around a little bit. And then my Yukon Golds, they don't even require peeling. So Super simple. I'll toss these all to coat them. Add a little salt and pepper. And then I'm going to put a lid on them and sweat them a little bit, which is typically what I do when I make home fries. I figure this will be a really nice taste complement to the meatloaf with a little bit of that tangy, uh, ketchupy treatment on it. So just some fresh ground pepper. You know when I do this, I feel like a chef. <laughs> I think it's, uh, having gone to Italy last week, I just, I'm all about, all of a sudden I just want to cook on the stove. A little bit of salt. We well, learned all this from Chef Dale. Oh, that's right. Chef Dale, he is the master at this. He's got the chef's hat to prove it too. I'll tell you what, his posts on Facebook and Instagram always get a ton of feedback because Chef Dale is just really cute. Alrighty guys, it's on. I'm going to leave it at kind of medium heat. I'm going to check it and flip those every once in a while. And then in the meantime, I'm going to throw my green beans in the microwave. And hopefully everything will be ready to plate up at the same time. Just a quick status check on the side dishes. So I decided to throw the green beans in the microwave because we like them steamed. It's our favorite way to do them. And then I like to dress them up with a little bit of, this is just lunch meat, black forest ham, believe it or not, sauteed in a little bit of butter. And I'm gonna toss that on the green beans with salt and pepper. It really gives them a great, great flavor. You can also do it with bacon. 
but the lunch meat ham is quicker. And then let's take a look at our potatoes as well. They're about halfway done. You can see that my vegetables are turning brown and so are the potatoes. I can't even tell you how great this smells. And it mingles with that almost barbecue-y smell that we've got going on with the meatloaf because of the ketchup topping and the brown sugar and the vinegar. It smells amazing in here and different. So next time you see us, we're going to be plating up food. 55 minutes have gone by. Let's pull this meatloaf out of the oven. I actually found my oven mitts, <laughs> finally. So, whoa! there you go. Wow, it's split down the middle. I wonder if that's a good or a bad thing. I don't know. <laughs> It smells amazing. We had almost no shrinkage because it's 90% lean. So we are going to let it sit for eight to 10 minutes and then we are going to slice it up and have dinner. Moment of truth, let's pull this out. The parchment paper I think is gonna make that super easy. I have to tell you, You'll see on the overhead camera, there is virtually no fat in this pan and a very tiny little bit of basically water. So I'm going to make some slices here of my meatloaf. Wow, it slices beautifully. Look at that, Mr. Cameraman. Look at those perfect slices. It doesn't fall apart. Well, just a little. Wow. And looks great. it is solid and firm. All right. Let's eat. I love it. <laughs> So check out this plate in this medley of flavors. We've got our savory meatloaf with the sweet topping. Can't wait to try. We've got some fresh green beans flavored with some ham. And we've got some Yukon gold baby potatoes with peppers and onions. What a wonderful flavor combination. Glass of wine. It's perfect. How about I give this a try? What do you say? There's a broken off piece. Call it my name. Wow, I like that topping, it's very good. You know, I'm very used to meatloaf having a brown gravy. So the thing that intrigued me about this was that sweet topping that doesn't require a gravy. So this is very savory and delicious and very firm. It's a really firm, nice, low fat meatloaf. Have some topping. Sip of wine, turn this around a little bit. Let me get into that. Wow, looks really, really good. Oh man, is it moist. Really good. It smells good. Oh, I like it. I like that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I really That's one do. bad thing about this is talking with your mouth full. <laughs> I, really like, I really like that uh, that topping on it. I'll tell you what though, it is a little, it's uh, moist. It's not real uh, firm, right? Is that the word I'm trying to think of? I think the moistness is just right. Yeah. Where you don't really need a gravy. Oh yeah, it doesn't need gravy at all. That's really good. Go away. <laughs> I'm gonna eat. First of all, before I do that, I just wanna put a little bit of uh, salt on these taters here. She makes the best taters in the world. And I'm not kidding you with all these uh, peppers and stuff in it. What looks better than that? Seriously. Mmm. Terrific. We're going to eat a little bit. We'll come back and say bye. Well, hey, as you may or may not know, we film these on Sundays. So this actually was our Sunday dinner. And it got very chilly here in Las Vegas this weekend. Very, very chilly. In fact, there is snow on the mountains. So we had a savory, warm, almost a winter supper, and it went down good. It was really, really good. I'm telling you, it, I've, I, I think this was one of my favorites. Yeah, he liked that a heck of a lot more than cheese enchiladas, let me just and, say. And I like the cheese enchiladas. So. But you're a meat man. Yeah, but I'm a meat guy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They were, it was really, really good. It was. And of course, the potatoes, I mean, you can't beat taters. You can't beat Paula's taters, I'll tell you that right <laughs> Wait now. Wait a minute now. Oh. That oh, sounds like oh, Durango. I, oh, no. oh, speaking of Durango, I wonder how he's doing. 
We lost him at yeah. Knott's Berry Farm. What happened? I don't know. Maybe he'll show up someday. I don't know. Maybe we'll at see. Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, this episode. And what's coming up next? I think we got a special episode coming up it next, right? It is Thanksgiving. The next time we post, it will be Wednesday, right prior to Thanksgiving. And we are going to do Thanksgiving dinner. Ooh, the whole thing? The whole thing. Oh, my gosh. Even pie. Dare I say it? Oh my gosh. So, well, I, I think Durango Dale might show up for that. <laughs> he might find his way home. <laughs> All right. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification button and follow us on social media. Absolutely. We have fun out there with all you guys. Thank you for watching. Hope you had a good time. We'll see you next time. Bye, bye, everyone. bye everybody. Bye.